Good evening and uh, welcome to tonight's edition of the Evening Review. My name is Taiwan Jabela, your host. Let's look at some of the headlines in tomorrow's Namibian Sun. Ex uh, FIC boss, uh, that is Leonie Leon, Dunn, who was in charge of the Financial Intelligence Center, is still available to the Fishrod probe, despite being appointed as deputy editor, uh, deputy governor rather of the Bank of Namibia, so the authorities say it's not a trick to block the the probe, and that she is still available. Katima Eben, councillor, uh, that is uh, Kennedy Simasiku, has been charged for theft. Details of what uh, that theft is about and where exactly it took place is also available in tomorrow's edition of Namibian Sun. And then, uh, from the north, a hospital is being blamed for a baby that was born with broken arms. That happened in Angela, and uh, the details again of how they transpired and who's responsible is in tomorrow's edition of Namibian Sun. Now, we have online uh, the deputy leader of the Landless People's Movement, that is uh, Henny Sebeb, to fill us in on the visit, very important visit that the that the leadership of his party made to State House yesterday where they met President Hagi Gengob uh, with his senior officials. Now I can see Henny. Uh, good evening, Henny. Thank you very much for making time. Uh, uh, give us a, a synopsis of uh, what your visit to State House was about. Uh, good evening, a uh, very good, e good evening. Uh, yesterday, we had, as you rightly said, a courtesy call or a courtesy visit to the president of Namibia, Dr. Hage Kengo. Now, this gathering or this courtesy call came at the backdrop of our governing the two regions, the Kara and Hardap region. And normally, before the annual general meeting of the regional councillors, and local authority councillors that resort under LPM governance. We thought it prudent that we need to pay a courtesy call to His Excellency the President so that we could share as governing parties in Namibia, them governing some parts of the country, as governing this part of the country, to share on some of the latest developmental issues. You will recall that there are talks that the oil has been discovered offshore in the Karas region. You will also recall that Negretal Dam has come under scrutiny once again, and people have been calling for the public-private partnership as far as the Negretal Dam uh, agricultural projects and all those things are concerned, the agrarian reform, basically. You will also recall that this region, despite having the Negretal Dam and the so-called oil discoveries, is that we are also having what we call the North Uber. North Uber, 200 hectares of land is available for possible investment opportunities. So we thought, let's meet the president. Let's talk about these things. We also know the president's flagship project, the green hydrogen project, is based here in Orangemont in the south. So that makes us to come together at the regional government level so that we could iron out what are the projects that the central government is having and what are the projects that the regional council is having so that we could meet each other halfway. So mm -hmm. really, this courtesy call 
was centering around that. But we did not only concentrate on issues that concerns the heart up in the Karas region. We went to talk about the Hain Om San situation, the marginalization, the land disposition that the Hain Om people are facing in more especially the Oshikoto and the Ochodonchuba regions and some parts of Kunene. We also talk about the hunger, the starvation that the San people are facing in the Omaheke region. And most importantly, we also touch on the local authority electricity debt. You know, the heart of the Karas region are one uh, of, of those local and regional level governments that face high levels of electricity debt. You'll recall that Nampawa last year estimated that 250 million Namibian dollars is what these two regions owe. So we said, let's look at how Hensel, the for some of the local authorities so that they start afresh. We also touch on Oshakati, how the countries out. Those poor people are living there for development purposes. So we touch on a variety of reasons and then a variety of issues that we really touch on that concerns the inhabitants, the citizens of Namibia. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Henny, for the elaborate uh... Uh, summary of that. Um, wh what was the reaction of the president to your ideas? What, what is unique uh, for me is that uh, this is not just a, a political party going to a state president to moan about certain things. You are now a governing party, like you stated yourself, in your own right as far as the two regions in the south is concerned so it cannot just be politics there ought to be genuine engagement uh, did you get that kind of uh, feeling yesterday as you engage the president yes yes uh, we submitted a document we summarized and submitted the document and the commitment by the president was that since this was a courtesy call and he was only with his two advisors that being the president Person Dr. Ingari, and then uh, Madam Inge Damwani, and the Presidential Affairs Minister, Christine Huepes. He made a commitment so that we can come back in probably two, three weeks. Then we are going to have a substantive meeting where the President will invite now his executive members, some ministers, like, for example, I hope the Ministry of, I mean, the Minister of Agriculture. Minister of Urban and Rural Development, because most of our concerns were centering around that. So he mm -hmm. made a commitment, and then I think hopefully by next week, he's going to come back with a date, and then they will also come with their uh, experts or technical people. Then we are going to have an elaborate, extensive, substantive meeting mm -hmm. where we are going to flash out all these topics that we have given to the president. So I think uh, uh, given the undertaking that the president has taken, that he is taking his time, he has provided his energy and, and, and the willingness to further engage on this matter. By the way, there was not that we have proposed and what the president has to us as his response. For example, on the green hydrogen uh, issue, we said that the regional council and the SMEs must be given also a role to play. So the president also concurred and said, yes, indeed, local economic empowerment must also take role. On the same with the oil discovery, if it is going to be realized, what role should the regional council play? Mm. The president that he has given, therefore, his commitment. He also gave us a homework to say on genocide. Uh, looking at the genocide debate now, it is uh, in him. But the president also went to say, look, when we come back, we must tell him how we should move forward with mm. this whole process. Because it seems to me that from the traditional authorities and the political parties and the government at large now, they mm. can't seem to find a common understanding. So he gave us also a homework to say, come back with a credible plan, how we must move forward with the question of the genocide. But of course, we have some islands for, for genocide reparations and so on. But 
you could see the president was happy to have met us. Uh, the president really wants solutions. Remember, he has only three years left, and he needs to leave Lakers also for himself. But the most impact the president was stressed, and with the leader and chief change campaigner of LPM, Bernardo Swarboy, was saying is that let's leave politics aside, mm. politicking aside. And let's concentrate on national issues. Let's concentrate on development issues. How do we therefore bring investment to Negar Delta, to oil and gas production? And, and those, that, those are really the key points that mm. we took home. Yeah, give me, in not so many words, Henny, so the words. sense of what is happening at Negar Delta. What are the issues around that dam? We saw... Uh, the dam being opened up a little bit to release some of the waters because it's, it's full. It looks like it's really exciting times in that re particular regard. But there are teething issues apparently. What are those in, in not so many words? The issue not how do we market the dam for investors? I know Namib Mills has expressed a public-private partnership whereby they won 5,000 hectares of land for their irrigation projects. But the real issue is now, and that is now tying in with what we wanted to do in Parliament last year. In Parliament last year, Honorable Utara Motu proposed a motion that we discuss next opportunities, viabilities, and possibilities, so that we could even have a conference on the dam to say what sectors should we bring there. Now, the biggest idea that the government is currently battling with is how to attract investment to the dam and also how to ensure that projects take place at the dam because otherwise it will be a waste as you are saying so how do we attract big capital to the mm. dam so that there must be investment for example we talk about agriculture. there are other opportunities in the tourism industry for example number of lodges guest uh, houses camps that must be built we are also referring to laser and recreation, for example. Recreation mm. activities that must take place on the dam. So there are a approach that must be taken to make the dam lively. And the other point was also perhaps we must consider renaming the dam. It can't be stuck with Negatral Dam. It's some uh, colonial names that they have used. So what are those possibilities that we must look at? But the biggest thing is the funding the investment and the type of projects that we must bring to mm. Negertal Dam. That is currently the biggest uh, headache for the government. Indeed. Um, your meeting yesterday with the, the president attracted a lot of attention, and you would know why, like I do, and that is really because there's been a, a history of friction between the president and Mr. Swartboy, uh, and even yourself. Uh, I saw people yesterday again uh, bringing, bringing up the, the poster of you saying Futsek Gengop, uh, Hage Gengop and stuff like that. Are we now entering into a new phase of collaborate, collaborative politics where as much as each party has its own aims and objectives that we recognize that we only have one country and that uh, what is good for Henny is also good for Toivo? <laughs> No, I, I, what I'm going to say here is that, look, we are in governance. LPM is not only party at the national level, at the parliament level. No. Here, when it comes to Karas and to Harita, we are in governance. And here, Swapo is an opposition party. So that reality must dawn. Mature democracies has moved beyond that. So we met yesterday with President it was at the at the local government level it is because remember can have one aim and that aim should be for the development of Namibia whether using capitalism or communism or socialism it doesn't matter at the end of the day so now we identified projects which are national projects for the national government, which are also very important to the regional government of LPM. So we have to find a common ground. Now, emotional about these things, there has been a history, as you rightly put forth. We are not saying we are embracing now 
swap for ideology. No, that's not what we are saying. Not interested to do what we we all know swap is this fish rot and most of their politicians are by the way corrupt. But we have a strict code of conduct. We mess our counselors. Why mm. instances? We are recalling our own counselors. Imagine I am seated here today in Getman Swap. Tomorrow or, or any other day, two more councillors from LPM will be sworn in. So we are very serious when it comes to governance issue, to service delivery and so on. So don't let us not mix Swapo as a political party and LPM as a political party. What we did was at the regional and local government coordinated, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for example, if we have to sign twinning agreements, it's through government ministries, such as the Ministry of International Relations, for cooperation mm. with other provinces, for example. We are interested now into branching out in April to Western Cape, to Gauteng, to Limpopo, so that the cars and the heart of regions can work together. We are mm. working on a model how city of Ventuk now, currently the mayor is an EM person uh, on the Honorable Sade Governors, how they can work together with the mayor of uh, Johannesburg, and I've seen some communication between Dr. Palace and Johannesburg, and Mayor Sadek Karnas, yes. Mm -hmm. At one point, we must collaborate and we get that. And I hope it's only in Kune are going to follow the same models because in Kune, Neswapo is also in opposition, it's PTM and UTF that are governing there. Mm. It's a coalition of the opposition parties. That I, 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 this, this new majority will become a permanent phase in so that is petty politics behind. Let's yeah. leave, uh, let's leave our emotions behind and and let's work now on the agenda. There is no time yeah. for, for political bickering. COVID has taken its toll need thing for the foreign direct investment so on so we must just work together indeed any any in the interest of time uh, we'll end our conversation here but but thanks uh, a lot for making time there was uh, parts of your very good contributions that we couldn't catch properly because of uh, i suppose connection issues but i think overall uh, we have captured your message and we appreciate your time thanks a lot thank you very much yes that is uh, Henny Saibab, uh, Deputy Leader of the Landless People's Movement. Thank you for watching and good night.